Wow. Loving my fruits. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm so happy to be here. And it feels good. It feels so natural to be here. And Bill told me that I can have the next three, four hours with me. <laughs> <laughs> I have so many stories to tell. Um, my plan was to talk about um, the power of decision. And I just heard that it fits perfectly into what you talked about. And I think I, I will tell my story, just a little bit of it, because it's a long story. <laughs> And, um, <clears throat> well, you know when the experience that you have, the fruits that you see in your life, they can tell you two things. They can tell you that you are separate from God, or it can tell you that you are one with God. And for the most part of my life, those experiences have been of separation. God, I feel nervous, so I don't know. Send her love. Thank you. You're not worthy. Yes, I am. My <laughs> 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 ego did not expect me to say that. Did out you look loud. in the mirror this morning? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm also <awesome> now. <laughs> okay. Um, when I was growing up, I was growing up in a family that I call a completely normal, dysfunctional family. Hmm? You know that one. We're all there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, my mother didn't know how to connect. She had four children. I was the youngest one. She didn't know how to connect. When I was 30, I found out that probably it was because she was adopted. She never told me. I found that out from spirit. And my father was um, an alcoholic. They split up when I was eight. And to top it all, I also grew up in a Catholic family. So it was completely dysfunctional in a fashion that um, we went to church every single Sunday and we heard the message about love. But I never saw love. I never felt love in that church. And by the age of 10, I had this, I had this thought in my mind saying, there has got to be another way. You know that one? Hmm? Mm -hmm. Because I thought that, what, what is going on? So I get born, I go to school, and that's a drag. I have to get an education, and that seems impossible. And then I get <coughs> married, I have children of my own, I work myself half to death, and then I die. <laughs> and then I get to go to heaven, and then I get to have the love of God. And I just didn't understand it at all. So I went searching <coughs> from that point on. I was 10 years old. I went searching. And I was searching for many years within the Catholic Church. And I finally left it um, many years ago now. But fast forwarding till <coughs> Easter 2012, I think. Yeah. I was done. I was completely done. I was uh, divorced at that time. I was living alone with my two children, my two boys. <coughs> I was living in a small cottage out in the woods because I wanted to be completely isolated. I went to work every day. And the funny part is that I worked teaching. I was motivating people. <laughs> and I was making people feel happy. And I was completely dead within myself. Mm. And I just couldn't go on any longer. I, um, because of the failed marriage, I decided that I was never, ever, ever going to be in a relationship again because I had this experience that I didn't know how to love. I didn't know what love was. I didn't know how to receive it, and I sure so didn't know how to give it. So I was just deciding that I'm just going to stay single for the rest of my life. The problem is that when you say something like that, you're cutting off all of the love in your life. So I didn't feel love to my work, I didn't feel love to myself, I didn't feel any love towards my children. And that's when the alarm really went off, because something is wrong, I don't feel love to my children. So <clears throat> my children went on an Easter vacation with their father, and I was alone in the house. 
and I watched a movie one evening, um, don't know, I don't remember what the name was, um, but it was about love, and it was about true love. It was about two people, impossible, but coming together in love. And I just completely burst into tears. And that's when I made one of the best decisions in my life. And that was to get the hell out of the way and let the Holy Spirit lead the way. Because I realized that I had been trying to survive and I had been struggling to survive and I wasn't doing a very good job. I could feel myself dying. I, I was on the verge of having <clears throat> a stress breakdown. Just couldn't do it any longer. So I fell on my knees, literally, I fell on my knees, and I told the Holy Spirit that I am scared, very scared, um, but I don't know what to do. So I just completely give up. I surrender, I give up. That's the best thing you can do, just give up. And I told the Holy Spirit that I, I realize, I now realize that of course I need love in my life. I don't know how to get it. I don't know how to give it. You're going to have to teach me all of that. But I will promise you one thing. I will do whatever you ask me to do. I will be scared doing it, but I will do it. <laughs> that was the decision. I'll do it, whatever it takes. And from that point on, something started happening in my life. Um, people started coming into my life. And that was quite difficult because I was completely isolated. But somebody actually came knocking on my door, wanting to talk to me, and I invited the person in. And we started talking about A Course in Miracles, and he knew a lot of people, and he started inviting me to meetings and things. And then one day, um, he invited me to a meeting, a seminar, a workshop with Gary Renard. He was in Denmark at the time. And I went, and I, because I was a little bit afraid of still connecting with people at that time, okay, I was very afraid, to be honest with you. <laughs> so um, there was a lot of people in this area, and I went to sit over here, <coughs> there was nobody in this area. I was all alone, I was just sitting there, holding the light, pretending, <laughs> anyways. <laughs> and, and I just sit there for myself and I make sure not to have any eye contact because I really don't want to interact with anybody. And then this guy comes along and he sits right beside me. And I go, whoa, you're sitting there? There's so many empty seats and you can sit right there? <laughs> <laughs> and um, and uh, okay, okay, I, I pick myself up because I'm a teacher, I know how to interact with people, I know how to be professional to interact with people, and I started talking to, to him, and I said, wow, you've got coffee, where did you get coffee? I want coffee as well. And that was my excuse to get up and give me coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and I came back and I had the coffee and he started talking to me and who are you? I've never seen you before. And I said, okay, well, blah, 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 blah. And it turns out that when he came into the room, he went to sit with his friends in this section. And when he sat down, he immediately felt a hand going like this in his hair <laughs> and sitting him down next to me and he had this voice in his head saying take her hand and you will see 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 and he didn't because he was also afraid and uh, after the Gary Renard seminar we just stood up and said well nice to meet you bye <laughs> <laughs> and then a week later, my friends called me up and they said, well, why don't you come to dinner tonight? And I said, sure, of course. And I hung up the phone and I had this feeling, oh, there's going to be some love tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I was just, well, it's of course a miracle, so there's love everywhere. So I just, I went to their house for dinner. And when I came in the house, I counted the plates, one, two, three, four. Who's number four? <laughs> and in the door, this guy walks, and I said, oh, it's you. And it was
was him. <laughs> and uh, we started talking. We had, a, we had a wonderful evening. And I started telling him about my life. I started telling him a lot of personal stuff. And I was going in my mind, why the are you saying those things? <laughs> and I couldn't answer it. But, but I was just, oh, it's a nice experience. It's OK. But I could also feel that he was falling through layers of love towards me. Mm. And I was like, good for you. Good for him. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I even showed him a picture of my house and he almost started crying. And I was like, good for you. Good for you. <laughs> and then we saw a movie that evening. And then I had the voice in my head saying, lean in towards him and everything will be fine. Lean in towards him and everything will be fine. And I got up and said, I have to go home now. <laughs> <laughs> so I went home. <laughs> and the next day, I was like, hmm, Some, something's, something, something's going on. And Katya, you did make that promise, remember? Mm -hmm. That you wanted to do anything, everything, no matter how you felt about it. Yes, I do remember. OK, do it. So I um, managed to get a hold of his email address, not phone number, notice that, not phone number. <laughs> An email, because you might not see the email. Um, but I got this email, and I started writing to him, hi, blah, 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 I have this, um, I have this feeling, maybe we should go for a walk someday. <coughs> and uh, <laughs> he's the kind of guy who sleeps with his phone attached to his ear, and he was like, oh, um, he, he wrote me back same minute <laughs> saying okay and uh, so we did we went for a walk in the forest with my with my dog and he was nervous and and because he was nervous I got brave and and I just we're just walking walking <laughs> so I was the brave one, and I told him, I can feel that you are falling through layers and layers and layers of love towards me. Is that true? And he said, yes. <laughs> and I said that there is nothing that I'd rather do than respond to that love. And he said, really? Wow. And three days later, he moved in. It is a wonderful story. And, and the funny part, and I just realized it a few days ago at your house, I realized that for years, because I don't know how to feel love, I didn't at that point, I've never before felt love in my life. Um, I always joked about, in my mind, I never said it out loud, um, that that I wish you could do a kind of blood test or something like that to tell that I am I in love or what? Right. <laughs> because I just didn't know. And and so I I because of that I joked about that the only way that I can ever enter a relationship again is if it's an, an arranged marriage. And I just realized that, wow, this was an arranged marriage. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> and um, and, well, what happened was, here she is, she's the one for you, and here he is, he's the one for you, go have fun. And it was so funny because I love you, I love you too. Do you take sugar and milk in your coffee? Because <laughs> 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 he moved in and we didn't know anything about each other. So, and that was, that was really funny because I know whatever you say, I'm going to love it. And um, because he was, he was uh, a student of A Course in Miracles and I was too, we know what we're up against. We know the ego. So we, we just started telling our stories. We started telling all our secrets, all the secrets, all the stuff that you really don't want people to know. We told it. We said it. And if we didn't say it, the Holy Spirit would come through the other part saying, <laughs> and for me it was finances, I didn't want to go there at all. That was my <laughs> secret number one. 
And Fleming just came to me one day and said, I've just been told that we need to talk about finances. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and then I could say, no, the Holy Spirit tells me that we need to talk about <laughs> But we did. We did. So this is a story about power of decision, the decision to get out of the way mm -hmm. and let the Holy Spirit show you. Because we don't know anything. We really don't know anything. We need to be taught like children. <laughs> and we need to accept that I am a child. I know nothing. And while we are accepting that I know nothing, we also have to deny the denial. We have to deny, we have to turn our back on what we think we know. That's the tricky part. Yeah. I have, I have two, one, two more stories about the power of the yeah, system. Yeah, as long as you want. Why don't, we, why don't we take a break and we come yeah. back to that. Yeah. And you have the whole rest of it. Yeah. 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 Two things. Two more things we're going to, Katja's going to share. Didn't she have an amazing story? Yeah. Wasn't that awesome? Yeah. yeah. You know, that, that, was, that was listening, noticing, and decision. That was awesome. Thank you. So everyone, please come back to your seat so she can uh, tell us more. Tell, tell us, us more. more. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. I just want to finish that story by telling that that when we met Fleming and I, when we just started not going out because he was living there. <laughs> well, um, we made a promise to each other. We, we've been married before, both of us. I've only been married for five years, something like that. I was married for 27 years. <laughs> and um, we promised each other that we would use our relationship to go home to God together. Mm. Nice. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. Yep. So we made that promise within the first week. And that means that, that we use everything that comes up between us to get closer to God and stuff does come up <laughs> not every day but every other day sometimes <laughs> twice a day <laughs> and things come up um, for instance me coming here I just I just had this feeling I get I get these feelings I get these pictures of what I'm supposed to do and when I took Lisa Bill and Al to the airport in Copenhagen I just had the, I think I'm going to be coming to your place in a couple of months. And I said, okay, okay. And you said, oh, you're the psychic one. You would know. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, I, I am, I am, I am. And it's going to be the 21st of October. And I just knew that. But making a decision like that and sticking by it, that's what I have to do in order to, to keep up with myself. I have to do that when I feel it. I know that I'm sending him off to a place of fear because he would know that, oh, money is short. She cannot do that. Money is short, we don't have the money, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So I do what I have to do knowing that, that I put him in some kind of fear and I don't mind. Actually, I am happy doing it because I know that's my, that's my role in this relationship. And sometimes he does it with me. He says that you, I just booked a class and you need to teach a class, blah, 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 blah. Just go do it. And I, he knows that I go, oh, I cannot do it, I cannot do it. And he's like, go on, go on, you can do it. <laughs> and so that's what we do for each other. And, um, and that's really powerful. And we, we have our space to do our things. Yeah. I want to tell you a funny story. It's a story about penguins. I think you've heard it. It's a story about penguins because penguins are creatures of habit, just like us, basically. And I had a, I have a friend who studied biology some years ago. And whenever he had a summer break, he went to and he got this summer job somewhere in the world. And this summer he went to the Falklands counting penguins. So he went off with some other students to count penguins, 
And the first day he arrived, he went out and stood on a cliff or whatever, just, wow, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. And he was just standing there for some time. And after a little while, he noticed that something was moving behind him, like, <laughs> <laughs> and he turned around, and there was a line, as long as you wouldn't believe, of penguins. Because the spot that he picked was the root to the sea. <laughs> and penguins don't waver the root to the sea. They would be. So whenever they meet a block, it's okay. They just stand and wait. <laughs> and wait. And wait. And when he got out of the way, the penguins started to and then jump into the sea. Isn't that wow. cute? And that's what we do. That's what we do. So we block the Holy Spirit and we block the flow in our lives. So now I have given you a picture. Yeah. You can never ever see or hear about a penguin again without <laughs> connecting it to your flow and to the Holy Spirit. So when you feel that pressure, uh, get out of the way! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's so, a good one. Yeah. I have two children, two sons. <coughs> Nicholas is 10 and Toby is 14. And they are beautiful, wonderful boys. And Toby, Toby is like a complete Xerox of myself. I know him. I know every sound he makes. I know every twitch with his eyes or anything he does. I know exactly what it feels. So because I have this connection with him, I also know that I can teach him anything and he can teach me too. So I've been teaching him about God and about A Course in Miracles forever. But with my other son, I haven't. Because I just, I think there's, I don't know. I don't know why, why. It just doesn't come natural. It seems like I just needed to give him his time, his space. But now is the time. I started talking to him about it as well. And uh, primarily because you came. Mm -hmm. and, and when you came, just when you left somebody else, Sally Ann, uh, who also teaches A Course in Miracles, who, an English woman who lives in Greece, she came to stay for us for a couple of weeks. And now all of a sudden, he's in the middle of it. And he's loving it. He's just asking <coughs> questions about lots of stuff. So I just started teaching them. And one of the things that I recently taught them was about the power of decision and the power of asking and letting go. So the story really begins with Sally Ann coming. And uh, Sally Ann didn't have any money. She had some euros, but she didn't have any Danish money yet. So, but she went to the supermarket across the street, and she just went to look, and how does a Danish supermarket look like? What kind of products do we have? And she saw this bag of almonds, and she just went, oh, I want those almonds. And she completely, she always goes straight to God and say, Father, if it's your will, I will have these almonds. <laughs> And she leaves them, and she comes home. And then Fleming comes home from work, and he goes straight to the supermarket, and he starts buying, 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 buying. <gasps> almonds. Gotta have almonds. <laughs> <laughs> and he buys almonds, and he comes home, and he unpacks, and Sally Ann goes, oh, great. Thank you, Daddy. <laughs> so, and, um, and a couple of hours, and, and then she changed some of her, some of her money. And um, a couple of days later, uh, Toby comes to me and says, Mommy, can I have some money? And he said it that way because he knew that he had been there so many days asking the same. And he had <laughs> gotten all the money that I was prepared to give him at this point. So I just said, well, you need to go somewhere else with you, your requests. And he said, what? What do you mean? And I told him the almond story. I said, you need to go to God. And he says, okay. Cool. He just completely accepts these ideas. And he, he went to God and said, I want some money. I need some money. And then Sally Ann comes in the room 
comes into the kitchen. He's, she's been in the guest house, and she comes in, and she says, I have a message for your son. Can I give it to him? And I said, sure, of course. And she says, my father is telling me to give you the money that's on my desk. <laughs> and it was like, bam, instant. Wow. Instant. Yeah. Awesome. It was wonderful. Yeah. 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 First, first hand experience. And then he went, oh, what more? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then the next day he comes home from school and he says mom do you remember me talking about going to the movies yes i do <laughs> and he said i just i asked god and look i just won a ticket today at school wow. oh, yeah. then i went whoa teach me <laughs> <laughs> teach me <laughs> and uh, and then it was time to introduce nicholas to these ideas and we talked about he could ask for stuff. And then one of the things that he really wants is for him, her dad, his dad to find another work so he can spend, he can spend more time with him. And he thinks that uh, that wish is, is it's, it's, it more I'm not sure it takes a long time for that wish to come through. Yes, that's true, but it's going to get there. It's, it's going to come. But he also had another wish. And he came to me and he said, it doesn't work. What you're saying doesn't work. I said, well, sometimes what you wish for comes to you in a different form of what you thought it would be. And often, it's a better form. Mm -hmm. So what did you wish for? It's Tim. <laughs> he said, I wished for candy in my lunchbox. <laughs> 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 and, and we just have this not a rule, it's more like a habit, and I, it's been in my family since I was a child, that, that candy is for Friday evenings. So you eat it's candy. It's Friday today. So we watch a cartoon or, and eat candy on Friday evenings. And this was a Thursday afternoon, <clears throat> and he said, it doesn't work, I want candy in my lunchbox. And I said, do you remember that yesterday, completely out of the blue, totally unheard of, you got a big bag of candy? So you can see it came to you, but in a different mm -hmm. and better form. And he said, nope, that's <coughs> not what I asked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah.